guys, this is Ms. Morgan, and we're going to go over the journal entries to issue a bond at a discount. As you see here, we have a bond for $100,000. The contract interest rate is 12%. Interest is going to be paid two times a year. The term is five years. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the total number of payments. So we'll say five years times two times a year means that the total payments on this bond will be 10. So we will have 10 interest payments. The market rate of interest is going to be given to us and the market rate of interest is 13%. Well as you read through the chapter you'll know that if the market rate is higher than our contract rate that means that everybody can get a higher interest rate by investing in someone else. And so what's going to happen is we're going to sell our bond at a discount. And in this particular problem, we're going to issue the bond for $96,406. So when we issue the bond, we'll debit cash for the amount of cash received, which is $96,406. We'll credit bonds payable for the face amount of the bond. Because even though we only received $96,406, we have to pay back $100,000. When you look at this journal entry, you can decide if you need a debit or a credit. And you'll see here that you need a debit for the difference between those two amounts. So discount on bonds payable is $3,594. Discount starts with a D and debit starts with a D. So hopefully you can remember that discount on bonds payable is always going to be have a debit balance. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to calculate the interest payment. It's very important that you know how to calculate the interest payment. So my formula here is going to be the face amount, and if you have your, your calculator, please type this in with me, 100,000 times 12%, so you would say times 0.12, divided by 2, because interest is paid semi-annually, which means it's twice a year. You only pay interest six months at a time. So every six months, you're going to write a check for $6,000 to the bondholder. Look at the, the journal entry to record the payment of interest. You're going to credit cash for the amount of the interest payment, $6,000. You're going to wait until the very end to plug in interest expense. Now the next thing you need to do is figure out how to amortize either the discount or the premium. In this problem we have a discount here. The discount on bonds payable has a debit balance of $3,594. We're going to amortize this with every interest payment. That means that we've got to take a little bit away out of this account every time we make an interest payment. So the way we're going to do that is going to be a straight line method. We're going to say equals the balance and discount on bonds payable divided by number of payments and that's going to be our credit to the discount on bonds payable. You're going to amortize that account every time you make an interest payment so that over time that account will diminish and the balance will be zero. So here in this second journal entry, which I have the journal entries in gray so you can see them, you would actually credit discount on bonds payable for $359.40. Then you're going to plug in the amount for interest expense, which will be $6,359 and 40 cents. So as you can see by this example, the amortization of a discount is going to add to the amount of interest expense you can put on the income statement. At the end of five years, you're going to pay off the bond. So you'll debit bonds payable for 100,000 and you'll credit cash for 100,000. At that point, you can take that liability off your books because you no longer owe bonds payable. 